everybody. Uh, welcome to Five Features. I'm Joe Pancelli, and today we got a very special guest. We got Cam Brown. Cam, how's it going, man? Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Good. Now, you were at the uh, Big Five banquet on Monday night. You see, yep. you brought home some, uh, some hardware. All Big Five second team, uh, Big Five co most improved player. So uh, what was that night like for you? Uh, it was actually pretty good, pretty cool. Um, it was my first time going to a Big Five banquet, so uh, a few people got inducted to a Hall of Fame. Um, there's some real good speeches. Um, a few of the coaches that spoke there um, gave some good knowledge and insight. Um, it was just pretty cool to see all, uh, basically, all my peers just uh, win awards and um, all their hard work pay off throughout the throughout the season, and just uh, bring the season to kind of a, I guess, kind of finish and get ready for next year. For sure. And, and I think you're a guy that I think a lot of St. Joe's fans like a lot because, you know, you look at your trajectory and, you know, this most improved player award, it seems like every year you've gotten better. And every year, you know, you really made a difference in your game. So I was going to ask sort of like what is the specific thing that you did to maybe do that? But I, I assume it's probably not one thing, right? You're just kind of grinding every day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, really, it's just it's just been a four year grind. Um. Just trying to uh, just trying to find things that that I can perfect each season. And um, it's, it's just working out over the summer, working with our coaches. Our coaches actually do a real good job of player development Um, for guys that want to get that, get that work in. And uh, really a lot of it just also come with confidence. Um, Just gaining confidence as the longer you've been in college basketball and the more experience you have, uh, that helps a lot. Yeah. And, and it's also like sort of coach Lang style. I feel like fits like the, what, what you're trying to do and you and Eric and Lynn and, you know, you kind of kind of flourish in that style where you guys can, you know, you guys got the green light to shoot for sure. Mm -hmm. You, Eric, Lynn, and, uh, you know, you guys play at a fast pace and, you know, you make your own shots. So you think that really complements like your game and how you want to be as a player? Yeah, definitely. And it helps just like, that's, that's what I, that's what I really worked on a lot last summer, just transitioning my game into something like that, be able to get a lot of threes up, um, be able to space the floor and um, be able to just be, be able to play with like other good players. That's another thing. Just learning how to play with other good players helps and know where you can find your shots at and know where you can get your get your touches at, which is um something that we worked on a lot over the summer. Yeah. Yeah, obviously this is a, this is a big five podcast. And, um, you know, we hear all everyone's all the fans ideas about this new big five structure. Um, obviously, this is rolled out for anyone not familiar that, you know, Drexel is now part of the big five officially and we're uh, going to the Wells Fargo Center for the uh, the culmination of the tournament style so what are your initial thoughts on that what are the guys thinking you know is it a big is it a matter to you guys or is it just a cool experience where's your guys heads at um I think it'll be real cool to be able to play at Wells Fargo um hopefully we can play in that first place game I know that's probably the the only game you really want to play in because nobody yeah. really lose so um, <laughs> but I think it's cool to be experienced to play at where the Sixers play at um uh, it's cool. Actually, honestly, I like playing the palestra. I hope we can still have a few of the games in the palestra. Um, but I think it'll be a be a good idea. Um, bring a bigger stage and uh, just just more. I think more coverage to the Big Five, which is which will help because there's a lot of good basketball, and most yeah. of the games are competitive most of the time. It's not like a lot of the games are blowouts. And like us as players, we get up for those games just for at least at St. Joe's. I know uh, Coach Lang really loves the big five games because of just all the tradition and, and tradition and past experience there's been. So we get up for those games and I uh, want to play hard and put on a show for real. Yeah. And that Nova game was probably the, one of the most exciting games of the year as far as attendance at, at uh, yeah. Hagen this year. And just, you guys fought real hard in that game. And it was, that was an awesome game to watch. Um, I guess, do, do you, do you get sort of pumped up for those kind of awards? Like the bit, the, 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 the you know, do you get do you take a lot of pride in those things, or it just kind of just comes with the, the territory of you know growing and developing as a player, and or do you sort of take back and get that recognition and be like, man, this is a cool thing? Yeah, definitely, it's it's definitely a great thing to uh, be recognized for. I mean, it's just it's you're getting voted by your peers or coaches. Or I don't know who votes for the awards, but um, you're getting recognized for for having a good year and 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 proving. And just there's a lot of good players in the Big Five, so be able to make second team and make most improved. Um, it's an honor, but you definitely uh, you definitely feel good about the awards. But you know, we the main award you want is that Big Five uh trophy at the end of the year. So hopefully we can grab that next year. But the awards is definitely something that you um, it definitely helps you and just helps you keep going and know you can you know people believe that you're a good basketball player. So it just makes you just want to become an even better player. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, you posted the other day that, you know, you are coming back to St. Joe's for your, for your final year. You don't have to get into any specifics like that, or but what was it sort of that drove you to come play for one more year? You feel like you had some some unfinished business. You guys had a great run. On the, on the yeah, yeah, we had a um, tough end of the season. Um, but I just feel like we had a, basically we, we had a young team, a real young team last year. Um, and we were just trying to figure out things throughout the year, getting guys getting experience, just understanding college basketball as a whole. And we also got some great pieces coming in. So it was kind of just a no brainer for me to come back and um, just help be a leader as well to the young guys that are coming in into the guys we already have. So we'll have, a, I feel like we have also, we have a lot more depth next year and a lot more guys that can just make plays and a um, bunch of guys that just, that just bought into the program. So like throughout the whole year, they were all telling me like, yo, yo bro, like you're not going anywhere, you know, like they're, <laughs> they're all in my ear. Like you may as well stay. So um, credit to them and um, just the culture that uh, Coach Lang has built. I credit to him that it's, it's a culture that like you don't really want to leave. And I've been here for five years. Five years sounds like an attorney. I would never thought I'd be in college <laughs> for five years, honestly. But um, just credit to to the culture that's built and credit to Coach Griff, who we just left. He that uh, who just left us. Um, he's did a, he's done a great job. Um, helping me personally, helped me personally off the court and even on the court. Just uh. He's a guy we're definitely going to miss, but um, he's helped build and, and, and institute things that uh, we probably keep. I'll keep with me my whole life, and all our, our whole team will keep with them their whole life just to help us get better and win more games. Yeah, you know, Coach Lang had that funny clip where he's like, "I'm still recruiting Cam right now." <laughs> still in the process. So, is he giving you calls and then making sure you know you're, you're back for next year? Yeah, no, honestly, I mean, the coaches, not, it wasn't really Coach Lang. Coach Lang was actually really cool about it. He didn't really talk to me about it too much throughout the year. Um, we were all we were all just mainly focused on the season last season. But uh, yeah. a lot of the coaches would talk to me about it and ask me if I had any idea what I was doing. And um, But uh, Coach Lang started, like, asking me, like, hey, like, you see what we got and you see, you see what's happening next year. So um, what you trying to do? And I guess they, they got me back. They, they were doing the right things. So how does that work? I guess so. Now you're doing grad school now. Yeah, I'll be in. Um, I'm actually going to get start my master's. I get a, a MBA, master's in business administration. Nice. Um, so I'm starting this. I'll probably start classes this summer because um, I actually finished. I finished graduating. Uh, I finished all my undergrad classes uh during the winter semester. So this semester I was kind of in all just kind of like elective classes just so I was um uh getting credits actually I, i'm actually getting a, a minor in english because it was the just the way for me to have the least classes and still be able to <laughs> eligible, still be eligible to play in the during the there second season right so semester is all year yeah i end up with a major in um sports marketing and a minor in english there you go you never know what can happen with that and um yeah. and, and, and sort of i think a, a thing that gets like sort of people don't necessarily always realize it, everyone knows that you know, D1 athletes are, you know, they have their days are full, basically. It's a full-time job as part of, um, you know, work, homework, class, training, weightlifting, regiment. What is that sort of like a day-to-day? -day? Like, how, how much is that – Like, how, how how's that grind? And, like, will it change now because the grad school stuff maybe picks up a little bit? Or what, what are you thinking? Um, I mean, the past four years, like, when you're an undergrad, for most people, it's it's hard because, you know – depending on like your practice schedule, whenever your coaches block off for practice, you're either going to have class in the morning and then you probably, you probably have like lift, then go to class in the morning. Then you'll come to the gym, probably like get some food, um, go see your trainer, whatever you have to do and get ready for practice or it'll be vice versa. Practice will be in the morning and then you'll have class in the evening, but um, it's definitely a grind, but it's a grind that, you know, you kind of just, get used to during the season you're definitely kind of just like on a schedule and you know you know what's coming here what's coming there so um you definitely get used to it but it's it's not hard at all you find a lot of times you take naps uh, that's something that's big you find, you find so few blocks where you can get a 30 minute nap here or an hour nap here before you have to go do your next thing but uh it's all part of the it's all part of the what you signed up for you know i mean None yeah. of the school, not the me personally. I, I don't like school that much, but <laughs> it's part it's part of it. So you gotta uh, you gotta get it done. But um, what about the, what about the weight room when you got there? Were you like doing any weightlifting before you got to St. Joe's? Or did you I did a I did a little bit of weightlifting before I got in college, but 
college weightlifting is a whole different like yeah, yeah. it's a whole different beast honestly but it's it's good for you you like when you see the results in the in the process and the progress that you made is it's you just want to keep going honestly you yeah. honestly want to keep going it's, this is like kind of like a like a fanboy question, I guess. But I was a St. Joe's guy, and like obviously St. Joe's has a, such a rich basketball tradition, and mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say it's probably the biggest thing on campus is the basketball program. So, what's it like for you to sort of like step into this place that has such like love for the sport and like such rich tradition, and to be like a part of that who represents that that great thing on campus? Yeah, it was actually pretty cool. Um, I went to Eleanor Roosevelt for high school, and um. I knew I knew about St. Joe's because Delonte West had went to Eleanor Roosevelt as well. Um, but to actually come here and um this as my years went on, you know, the first few years were, were a little tough for us, but the years went on, you kind of got to see more of the support coming in, more people realizing that like we're 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 moving in the right direction. Yeah. And um and um this year was probably the this year was probably the biggest year support wise that I've seen. And um, it was it was pretty cool because people really care about people really care about St. Joe's and and like the basketball team being uh, having having good success. Yeah. So um, it's been a great experience, great experience here at St. Joe's as far as fans fans go. Um, even just making friends like other students that go here, it's been um, it's been a great time for me. Yeah, you guys were definitely packing out the place, like towards the, you know, with that stretch in the middle of the season. Then mm-hmm. some LaSalle game was was really really crowded, and you know, picking yeah. up steam once you guys got rolling, like everyone's buying in for it. You know, that, you know that's why you know coming into next year with this with you know a lot of promise on your guys' roster and some established guys, and like you mentioned, you know these young guys are coming in who who have a lot of uh, pedigree. You know, you have to imagine that all the fans are kind of buying in. And you see on Twitter, you know, I don't know if you ever see like those Twitter spaces. People are talking. Yeah. People are getting out, out there. Uh, like I saw Sean Simons was in one of the Twitter Twitter things, like saying how good you guys are gonna be. So yeah, it's yeah, good yeah, he, he's he's real good. He's gonna be real good for us next year too. Oh yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see. But um, you just kind of mentioned about your high school experience. Um, what was your recruiting process like? Where, where when did St. Joe's come into the picture? When like what were you looking at before that? Um, St. Joe's actually came in super late. Um, I was committed to um, I committed to William and Mary early in my early in my senior year I think before I even started before our season even started I think I committed in like September October but yeah. then um I played through the whole season I was committed I was ready to go to William Mary and then in uh towards March when we started playing in the playoffs in high school uh the William Mary coach got fired so um I wanted to reopen my recruitment one because I kind of felt like I had a good senior year and um I just wanted to see what else would happen. So, yeah. but it took me a while to get out of my uh, letter of intent. And then once I got out of it, um, Coach Brendan that was here, he would used to coach me in uh, at Eleanor Roosevelt um, when I was like a, from my freshman year to basically junior year. And he reached out to me and um, told me about the opportunity here. A few other schools in the A10 have reached out to me too, and a few more CAA schools, but um. I just felt like I had a good opportunity here to play right away. Um, I like what was Coach Lang was telling me when I was talking to him, and I trusted I trusted Coach Brendan because I had been playing because he had coached me before, and I had already had a relationship with him. So I felt like this was a good good place for me to uh to come to. That's, that's Brendan Strong, right? And he's, yep, Brendan Strong. And yep. He's, he's the reason basically that there's such a strong connection between St. Joe's and the DMV. Right? Mm-hmm. He's got some studs out there. I know we're getting a lot of those guys uh, coming in from St. Joe's. Yeah, he got us Eric Reynolds. You know that was <laughs> that was a great get right there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and when you were going into St. Joe, did you know anything really about it, like the Big Five at all, or did you know about um, well, kind of like the A ten? I guess you knew you said you had some offers from the A ten, but about the Big Five. No, I had no. I had never heard of the Big Five before um, until I came to St. Joe's, and how I didn't even know St. Joe's and Villanova it was called the Holy War. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how big these games were and how everybody used to play in the palestra. I heard of the palestra before, um, yeah. but I never uh, – the big five was all new to me. Sort of like going back, you know, you, you had this great – you said you had a good, really good uh, senior year. At what, what point did you kind of realize that you, know, you were like a D1 guy, that you were going to make that next jump? Um, it was late. I didn't realize probably to like my junior year. I didn't. Get, I don't think I got my first Division One scholarship until like end 
the end of 16U, uh, 16U AU season. And I think it was from, um, I got, I think it was from High Point. That was my first division one offer. But, um, yeah, that was probably around then, probably like going into my, going into my 17U year at AAU, I kind of realized that I had a good chance of at least playing basketball at the, at the, at the next level, hopefully for free. So that's kind of when it hit me. And that's kind of the thing the last, what, I mean, maybe the last decade or so is that when you're at that AAU level, I feel like you're just playing against such good competition at all times. Yeah. And you're, Chicago, you're not Chicago, uh, you know, BMV guy. I'm sure you're, even in high school, you're playing against like guys who are going D1 all the time. So you, you kind of probably know like where you're at in that sense is where, as far as like, I can, I can mix it up with these guys. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially in DM, especially in the DMV area, there's a lot of guys um, in my class that were, getting division one offers kind of like 15U, 16U early. And um, it's just hard because it, it, that's that's one thing I talk about a lot. Um, like it's hard to – you can't really compare yourself to other people, especially when you're in a rich basketball area, whether it's like the DMV, New York, anywhere, Florida, especially when you're a rich basketball area because it's just so many – it's so many good players. So you can't really compare yourself to like if this dude's getting a scholarship – from a high major or if this dude's getting a scholarship from D2 low major, you, you just kind of got to worry about yourself and um just like bet on yourself and work on your game. And hopefully, and hopefully you get where you get. And then once my dad always say, they'll come find you. If you, if you put it on, if you're playing well enough, they'll find you. So. Yeah, definitely. What, what, I'm sw- switching over sort of like some A10 stuff. What, what was, what do you think like the best, like the most like rowdy arena is, is it Dayton? Yeah, this Dayton, we this was my first year playing at Dayton. Um it was sold. It was actually sold out. It was actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty loud. Dayton, I'd say VCU, VCU when it's packed, they have like people sitting on the, at the uh end of the um near the court near, on the baseline, like dressed up and <laughs> all these parody characters. Um <laughs> it's pretty crazy. VCU and let me see where else is there. Maybe St. Bonnie's. If St. Bonnie's is packed, because yeah. you know it's in the middle of nowhere, middle of nowhere right? nothing to do out there. <laughs> so St. Bonnie's is packed. It's pretty. It's pretty uh rowdy in there. But those those probably top three. Um, I've been getting into uh a ten Twitter a lot, and mm-hmm. those guys are cra- these guys are crazy, man. They're like yeah. crazy fans. Like every <laughs> seems like every school in the a ten has crazy fans. Nah, fans are, fans are are no, yeah, fans are like no stuff about you. Some of the students actually. Well, Loyal Chicago is new to the A10, but we played at Loyal Chicago this year, and it was packed. And like the student section, like was right on top of you, and like yeah. they knew stuff about they knew stuff about like me, Eric Lynn. <laughs> they knew stuff about Rashier. They was they you take the, they, so I took the ball at one time. They were telling me things that I'm like, how, like how'd you know that? I saw. Did you see that um the guy was it a Duke the guy who like catfished some one of the players on Duke or something like that? You yeah. See that? <laughs> Yeah, the Duke game. Yeah, I, I seen that. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> he posted that, and they were like, "Dude, this is not a W." Like you think it yeah. is. Like, it's weird. <laughs> uh, going, so we're going back to like what the A ten. Like I feel like the A ten like is kind of known for being built on like great guards. Mm. And like you guys are probably you guys have obviously we talked about the guards you guys have coming back are awesome. And the ones coming in are great. What are some of the guards you played this year that were like, man, this guy can really play, and he really embodies like that guard a 10 league uh, james bishop i know he's a real stud yeah james uh james bishop he uh he was scoring a lot against us in the tournament game he played for the <laughs> tournament game um uh ace baldwin he was pretty good against us this year um yep. collins yeah yuri yeah yuri collins yeah he, he was he he can he can distribute the ball i didn't realize like I felt like we were hold, holding his assists, like he yeah. didn't have any assists against us. But I looked at the box score, and I think he still ended up with like thirteen assists <laughs> or something like that. And I'm like, ew. Yeah, you um, guys played that well. There's a lot of good guards in the um in the A10, um, but I think we got the best too, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think Eric can win. I think Eric is is up there. Probably if we have a. Um, I think we if we win like three, four more games last year, I think he's easily on first team. Um, yeah, if there's somewhere I could go and like deposit money into Eric Reynolds winning the A10 Player of the Year, I'm gonna go try to find it. 
Yeah, I but, think uh, I think we got probably the best guard in in the league. For sure, you got you got plenty of them too. Um, yeah. Everything I noticed about you is seems like you're kind of like a chill guy. Like on the court, you seem really composed. You seem like you can turn it up and get in flow when you want to, but you seem like pretty much relatively level-headed and everything I've seen off the camera and off the court and stuff, you seem kind of the same way. Would you say that's like a fair assessment of like the way you like try to attack the game is you're a competitor, but you kind of like just level the playing field a little and feel things out? Yeah, definitely. Cause like, it's a long game. So I don't ever try to get like too high or too low, especially if a team gets up, team get down, like you can be down 15 and you can be back in the game and, like two minutes you you get like three stops and, and three buckets and you you right back in the game so um and especially with a bunch of young guys this year uh yeah. it, you don't want to you don't want to seem like you're too rattled all the time because because as a leader they're just looking at you um and they're going to respond how you respond so uh trying to keep guys composed in the game is always something that um something i've actually learned through here i learned from coach griff um just making sure everybody's still level-headed is a is a big thing for sure all right so i got a little segment here, like five rapid fire questions for you all right you said right. answer yes or no favorite thing to eat on campus oh on campus not I much talk <laughs> it's, it's not that many options not to, it's not to be <laughs> options on st joe's campus hawk Either, wrap, is that you said? yeah i'd probably say a hawk wrap or or larry's okay well I was, the next question was larry's or delisandro's oh delisandro's for sure yeah all right all right, favorite jersey you've worn at St. Joe's? Uh, black, the Black Hall Kale jerseys that we wore this year. Okay, I like the new white ones with the script, the St. Joe's. Yeah, I like yeah, I, yeah. I think I like the Black Hall. We had a pair of white jerseys. Um, it might have been my my junior year. I think I think the the white jerseys those were pretty nice too. But it's definitely the Black Hall Kale. For, and for you guys get any say on? Do you guys get any say on that? Um, what jersey we wear every game? No, nah, yeah. nah, nah. we we try. They just pick. They just pick them. Like we'll 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 let them know. Like yo, we've been wearing this jersey a lot, and then maybe they <laughs> pick it up. But uh, we don't really get to pick before the game or anything. All right, ba- best basketball movie. Probably Coach couple. Carter. That's my favorite too. I like. I love that movie. Yeah, Coach Carter. Yeah, also, I guess you kind of said other year said this, but playing that Wells Fargo or at the plus year, I think we already answered that kind of. You're yeah. excited for. Yeah, I yeah I think the palestra. I think just because if it's if you get enough people in there, like every everything's right there on top of each other and um can make for a great a great environment. Yeah, like the uh the Philly the Philly Catholic games. The I went to the um the championship game. Uh, Who's playing Roman and uh, Newman? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a yeah that was a crazy environment in there. Was it? Yeah, obviously you're talking about Xavier had that great shot at that yeah, game. He had a big shot. Like, he had a guys, big game. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys like connect once the, someone commits, do you guys like connect with them and like start welcoming them already, or do you have to wait a little bit? Or no, nah, we um usually when people commit, like uh they will get their number um or Instagram, we'll start we'll start reaching out like, yo, bro, we're excited to have you, things like that. Um we'll definitely start connecting. But you know, Xavier's been around. X has been around for a little minute since uh, Coach Scott is, is coaching yeah. here. Um, but anybody else that usually commits, we'll, we'll reach out like right away and start connecting with them. For sure. And I was looking back sort of at your, your profile on the St. Joe's website, and I think you said you're like 40th all time in points. And I think it was like, it might be ninth in three point uh, percentage. Obviously, you have one more season to go, and everything kind of seems like there's everything's climbing upward. Obviously, you know, how cool would it be to just sort of get your name in some of these you know, record books and be a part of St. Joe's history when you're all wrapped up here? Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be amazing. Um, uh, there's a lot of great players who played here. Um, a lot of great people are still playing here and probably come through after me. But uh, yeah. just be able to leave my mark and um, hopefully uh, be able to leave a mark a little bit more by by bringing a bringing a trophy back to uh, Hagen and St. Joe's, um, that would be big time. But uh, just to be my name be etched in with some some legends, it would be, be pretty cool. Definitely. And you, and you talked earlier about, uh, you know, sports marketing major, you're gonna, going to grad school now. Uh, any idea of what you might want to be doing with that degree or have you looked at professional options yet or do you, are you just kind of just letting this year go by and see what happens after? Yeah, I definitely want to play professionally after um after this season's over. So, uh yeah. 
wherever that takes me, however long we play in professional. Um, I play for as long as I can. Then um, I'm really into like coaching. Um, yeah. I'm actually like during practice. I, I I'm really cool and calm and collected on the floor, but during practice I can be a little, I can be a little <laughs> stern and yell at a lot of people. But um, <laughs> I just have a passion for like just helping people and um, making yeah. them better. And uh, I like to train. Yeah, so you're, so you're camping training kids, yeah. Yeah, well, how'd that come out? How, how'd that come about? Um, I was actually just thinking about like just ways of just like giving. We were talking about we were actually talking about like community service one day in the yeah. office. Um, and uh, about things that we were going to do this summer for community service, and I was just thinking like I loved it. I would love to train kids and um just help them get better because uh it's a whole different. It's like college basketball is the most basic thing you like. If you came and watch our practice, we do some of the most basic fundamental things like yeah. every day, every day in practice. And um, I don't think a lot of kids like realize that they're in high school or in middle school that you don't yeah. like all the flashy stuff. I mean, that's only for like the 0.5 percent of the of just the people that are just crazy good at basketball. Sure. And um, fundamental things really going to help you. So um, that's why I kind of started just. I wanted to train like younger kids, um, maybe kids that just got in high school, just to help them, just help them develop and, and learn a few things that can uh, that they can translate to translate and move on in the game. How about a twenty five year old ball guy? Can he play? Yeah, yeah, I can help you out. <laughs> I can help you out for sure. I got to play every Wednesday, dude. I can use. I can use that. Yeah, the men. You you're going to kill the men's league. <laughs> oh, dude, I tore my. I was at LA Fitness and I tore my ankle up. Uh, going up for a layup so I'm, i've am i been sidelined for a bit but i'm trying to get it back out there yeah you can definitely get back out there yeah that's what that's one thing i'm actually excited about too whenever i'm done playing basketball whenever professional <laughs> i'll love to i can't wait to play in the men's league oh, that's the best. and uh have fun yeah well, last question i mean I, we, we sort of talked about it earlier but you know how, what are your what's your uh sort of thoughts and what do you think about for this upcoming season with, with all the pieces you guys have and all the momentum you kind of brought from last year yeah, I, I love the team we have. And honestly, I think like the all our fans talking about how they believe we're going to be so good next year, um, all the pieces we're bringing in, um, I think it's really good for us just because I think I think having having high expectations and wanting to meet them, it helps you a little. Well, at least pers- it helps. I think it helps the team a little bit more just because you don't want to not meet those expectations and, and be a failure. So it makes you work harder. It makes you get more reps in, get more shots up as a team. And and as a team, it brings you closer because uh, I just feel like, you know, um, we all know that, I mean, everybody wants to win, but I think we're at the point where we all know, like, if it's his night, hmm, give him the ball. We don't care how it happens. We just want to win games. So I think it's pretty exciting. Um, I, Me personally, I think we'll be really good next year. That's why uh, that was one of the main reasons I came back. And um, I think it just all starts – it all starts right now. Like, we just started workouts again. So, I think it all starts at this moment. You can't just flip a switch when uh, November comes and think you're going to be really good. It takes a, takes a few months just to, just to get together and, and make and bring that chemistry together as a team to help, help us get to where we want to when March comes back around. Awesome, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you coming on. It was great talking to you. Yep, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll see you later, man. All right.